Hi everybody, this is Craig Tanner for the Mindful Eye and the Daily Critique. Today's image was submitted by Matt, who's an intermediate photographer from West Virginia. Matt says this is an old but still in use railway bridge over the Potomac River that he's photographed many, many times. So there's sort of a couple of ideas that he's thinking about here in terms of what he's communicating with the photograph. One is just the comparison or contrast between the graphic sort of hard edge quality of the bridge and the softer environment of the river flowing past the bridge. The, the second thing is a lot more conceptual. Matt says that he gets a real strong feeling uh, from coming to this place of the timelessness of natural systems like the river versus the impermanence of man or something that man would build like the bridge. So very conceptual. I want to talk more about that. Um, Matt says he shot this with a Canon PowerShot A590IS at ISO 200, stopped down to F5 and exposed the file for a 250th of a second. He has several questions under questions and comments. One is, what do I think of point and shoots in the pursuit of art? And the rest of the questions are really all connected to composition, the black and white conversion. What do I think of that? What do I think of the lighting? Matt recognizes there's a lot going on here, lots of qualities of lines. So what do I think about all that relative to composition? We'll get into that in just a minute. I want to say one thing. Um, on the front end here. This is could have easily been turned into an hour-long podcast um, because um, the fact that Matt is brave enough and courageous enough to specifically say from uh, an aesthetic sort of intrinsic standpoint what he's going for here and also from a conceptual standpoint not only what he sees but sort of the feelings he's hoping to evoke. Matt is being about as specific as you can be and about as brave as you can be in terms of saying this is what I'm trying to communicate. And um, to me, the two areas of art that are sort of the most interesting as both a teacher and an artist is, number one, what can we do to just say yes to the process? And then once we've engaged, how do we deal with being in a communication feedback loop with something that we're making that can tend to start to get confused with ourselves or with something that's very precious. And I say confused because I think that we are confused if we start to think that we uh, are our art or we start to hold it up as an object itself that should be defended or that is uh, precious just in and of itself. And I still see that the artwork is an ongoing thing. And it's more about a vehicle to let us figure out who we are. You can't take these pictures with you. You can't take the books with you. You can't take the praise with you. But how do you evolve as a person uh, as a result of participating um, in this process? And to me, um, you know, like I said, I could talk about this for a long time because it's interesting to me. Huge thank you to Matt for being this brave, and I want to encourage other people not only to make submissions to the Daily Critique, just submitting is a profound way where you can share what you're doing that might help somebody else, but to be brave like Matt. We have a great submission form now where you can, uh, if you want to, be very specific about whatever it is uh, that you're trying to communicate. You may just be working on something technical and you're not there yet conceptually. Um, Real quick about point and shoots, I think they're awesome. I think they're a great example of a type of camera that people are likely to carry that encourages people to say yes to the process. So I think point and shoots are awesome uh, in the pursuit of art. Anything that encourages you to engage the process and anything that's working for you as a tool relative to whatever it is you're trying to say to me is just great. Um, let me do something real quick. Let me just talk about how I move through this image. Let me just sort of pretend like we don't know Matt's backstory, and I just see this on the wall. It's a high-impact image. I like it almost immediately. I love rivers. I love bridges. This has been framed in a way where it's very, very easy for me as the viewer to experience the subjects in this image. They separate in a beautiful way. Um, I love the, the, the comparison of the hard lines of the bridge with the gauzy sort of ethereal overcast day and this sort of ethereal feeling of the bluffs and the water. I love that contrast. Um, the other thing that I do enjoy a lot in this image is the way that I'm led through the image by quality of line. And ultimately what happens for me in this image is I end up right here and this becomes the main subject. It's really interesting to me because Matt didn't mention the tree at all specifically as a subject, but for me it's the main subject. So making this more philosophical today, and let's get a discussion going, one of the things I'd love to know from other people is what is your main idea that you get out of the image? And then what happens to me once this sort of becomes the main idea from an emotional standpoint or conceptually, what do I tell myself about this image? 
what I think of is just life finding a way. I think of the word surviving, or I think of a word like tenacious, um, or just th this concept that life just keeps showing up. It's almost like everything is intelligent and is pushing towards that. And the interesting thing is that for me, conceptually, the bridge, instead of being uh, something that's impermanent, it ends up supporting this very, very powerful feeling of sort of life just coming out of just the crack or just any little foothold that it can get. And it happens in a very powerful way. So I almost get sort of the opposite feeling about the bridge um, that Matt is talking about. Um, just real quick, from an aesthetic standpoint, I think it's a beautiful image. The black and white conversion to me is dead on. I, if I, I tried to change a few things tonally, set a little bit more of a black point in the image, that made the bridge overwhelming. I tried to darken this up here a little bit, but then it, uh, it's funny, then this sort of cutoff corner started to kind of dominate. This is a hard thing to get away with, but I think it's balanced in this case by all of this very bright gray. The only thing that I thought about doing here is getting rid of this, if you change the editorial content, to make what I feel like is the main idea even more dominant. This other sort of tree growing out of a bush or weed or something growing out of the side of this kind of competes with this a little bit. So I could see chopping out part of this, covering it up. There are a lot of people that wouldn't want to do that because it's a documentary or editorial shot. And I also could see just skewing this ever so slightly where this sort of diagonal relative to this feeling more straight up and down doesn't dominate as much. But uh, that's about it. Uh, I think it's a very, very powerful photograph. But what's interesting is if Matt and I were standing there and he was describing what he was going for, I would say take this shot for sure. And let's show it on the workshop. And then let's hear what other people have to say. And then that gets into a whole other philosophical area, which is if you know what it is you're trying to communicate and the picture is actually a metaphor for something else, then how important is it to you as an artist that the message is received? And then if it's not being received, what are you going to do about it? And if it is being received, is it being received too quickly? People aren't having to work enough or get inside of the photograph enough and so on and so forth. All those things, great areas for discussion. I think what I would say is two things. Um, if I was uh, going for this idea of the bridge itself and the way it relates to the environment, both intrinsically and conceptually, I'd get rid of the tree. Because in this quality of light and this black and white treatment, this to me becomes the main idea and it says something different than what Matt's talking about. I would be more tempted to come in and do something that's a little bit more abstract down in this part of the image where you still have the river and the bridge playing off of each other. Um, but you don't have that other subject that starts to sort of become overwhelming that's above the line up there. And I could even see coming in and getting tighter and tighter and doing something like this. And I would even say that in this shot, the bridge is becoming more impermanent. It's a reflection now. A reflection is almost sort of like a ghost. Um, and, and to me, the water becomes a little bit more uh, permanent. But that's pretty iffy. That may be a pretty big stretch. Ultimately, I think what I would say to Matt is, this is important to you. This is a place you come to over and over again. It's important enough to you to share something that's very, very difficult for all kinds of people to talk about. We run from our feelings. We see that on the Next Step workshops. Mainly what's happening to people and the reason their pictures aren't having a bigger impact is they're not allowing themselves to live a life uh, that is emotional enough. They're cutting themselves off from the scary things that are connected to feelings that they don't want to have. Me included. Big time. So I'm not preaching here on any level. I'm just trying to share something and saying that I think that we all can have that in common. What I would say to Matt is, make it a project. I mean, for God's sake, this seems like something that's a big part of your life already. So let's let's come up with a name for a show. Let's start a journal. Let's come up with all the different ways that you could show this concept and turn it into a book or turn it into a project. Say a big thank you to Matt uh, for uh, sharing uh, his backstory in such a profound way. And I uh, hope to see you again soon on The Mindful Eye.